Good day everyone, so today's video is all about numbers and you can see lots and lots of numbers on the screen. At the current moment we don't have Chlorand or Citroen in GC Sim, so no fancy graphs or calcs, but we'll do that once it's out. In the meantime, you're gonna have to be satisfied with what I'll show you today. Basically, I will show you a lot of different videos just to corroborate the numbers that you see so that you can make sure that we are at least making a fair like, conclusion and assessment here. But basically what I want to do is really look at what is the contribution from Citroen. So what today's video format is all going to be about is to say, okay, here is Farina. This is how much her pets do in terms of damage. What happens when we start adding Citroen? Okay, now let's add in Farina plus her elemental burst. Now let's add in Farina plus her burst plus Citroen. Now let's add in Farina plus her burst plus Citroen plus Kazo, etc. You get the whole point. I want to gradually see what the effects are of adding more and more units. And the idea here is to ultimately get to some sort of number or a comparison and see what it is that Citroen exactly provides for the team. And then I ultimately want to compare this against what Kokomi does in terms of just being on field and doing lots and lots of damage. So speaking of Kokomi, let me quickly show you what Kokomi does. Well, at least let me start showing you the builds for Kokomi and then we'll do the comparison. So in this video, my Kokomi is at a at a max level. She's C6R5 triple crowned and this is going to represent the ceiling for Black Kokomi in a mono hydro team and you'll notice that the Citroen team at C2 doesn't really fall that far behind. Certainly in my assessment if you've got Citroen at C6 she just trumps Kokomi in a mono hydro team. But I do think C2 is currently the hot topic for Citroen because of that juicy 35% hydro risk threat. So we'll talk a bit about that. But that's the level at which I want to keep this conversation. And just to note a couple of things, these are Kokomi's normal hits. So they're quite hard. And um, once you've got all the fanfare stacks and Yelon and Kazuha buffs, you can see that Kokomi's burst hits 19k, something a lot of people like neglect and the jellyfish does 16k per hit which is again something a bit of little damage here that a lot of people don't really seem to understand but the combination of these two and you're already hitting 35k with kokomi just passively in any case so what i'm going to assume is that we're going to run four cycles of kokomi so this is basically in one in two and three plus um, c1 the reason I'm assuming 4 is because typically you want to swap off Kokomi early in a mono, on a monohydro team so that you can re, um, start rebuilding like the fan face stacks, recasting all your buffs and so on. And this is also the time at which Kazuha's um, resistance rate also black falls down. For those of you that want to know a bit more about Kokomi, you typically get about 5 cycles at C0 and about 6.5-ish at with her C4. I've covered this on the channel before, but effectively if we we assume you get immediate ocean you clam damage and two extra instances in this four cycle like period then you can basically see that these will be the numbers you get obviously we're also assuming bucket karage hits immediately and then you get three more instances afterwards basically um, an estimate of kokomi's damage well it really should be about 500 to 700k but roughly i mean napkin math that's what you get with kokomi in any case it's pretty damn good Look, Kokomi at C6 hits a lot harder, especially in a monohydro team, than a lot of people give her credit for. In any case, so that is Kokomi done, and I've labeled it as video K1, which we just saw. So now let's get into the bulk of the discussion. Let's just see what we have with Farina at base. So this is Farina F1. You'll see I've got some double dashes here to denote different ranges that I've observed. And obviously the square brackets here denote non-critical hits. So let's just quickly go to video F1 and see exactly what it is that Farina is going to provide. So here we go. Here is the enemy, here is Farina, and she's just going to stand here and boom, these are the numbers that her pets are going to do. Obviously, keep in mind there are artifact buffs and obviously the weapon passive buffs, so that's why some of the numbers do fluctuate a little bit. Okay, so that, those are the base Farina numbers. So now let's see what happens when we add Farina plus Citroen. So this is now going to be F3 that we're going to be looking at. So let's just play the video from where we were and quickly go a bit forward. So this is now Farina plus Citroen. There we go. 
and let's just see what happens farina spits and there's a little citron bubble and there you can see the numbers are immediately quite a bit higher i'm just going to quickly let this play out so you can see a bit more of the numbers and so on by the way this is why we have the frame counting software because we can literally count frame by frames and see exactly which hit like contributed which damage but effectively what you get here with citron is that the damage numbers ramp up quite significantly you can see here that equivalently if i can the non-crit hits and the crit hits and so on uh, for the seahorse it's almost about a 233 percent increase so this is with c2 citron and obviously the songs of days past like artifacts it and then the octopus and crab are roughly about 1.9 1 1.7 ish um, in terms of an, a multiplier over base farina you'll also notice here that this is actually very similar to just farina plus her own fan stacks and that's exactly what i'll show to you now so this is just going to be a q um, f2 so here we go farina we're just gonna like put up the fanfare stacks and just hit the enemy there so she'll you'll see she'll just give herself a max fanfare so yes max fanfare stacks and this is what farina um buffs herself to be which is quite good so if you now compare the numbers effectively farina and well basically citron is like a copy of farina on the field it's it's almost like you have two farinas or equivalently citron at c2 is like farina buffing herself in terms of damage so these numbers are very similar very very comparable there are obviously some fluctuations and differences and you can see the citron numbers definitely do creep up slightly higher but again there are different effects that are happening here um, at different times so you can you can see them as more or less equivalent but there are a bit of differences in any case um, actually it's the other way around it's the fanfare numbers are just slightly higher than the citron numbers but then again um, this also depends on if your citron if you get her to 65k hp then it's they'll, they'll roughly be equivalent okay so now that we've gotten all of this down let's try and see on f4 this is the second the fourth case what happens when we take farina plus citron plus the kazuha reshret so these are going to be the next numbers we'll see so let's quickly go here our poor little yellon i'm um, just going to quickly pause Boom. so this is f4 there we go and there's farina spets gonna quickly do that swirl boom hit him right so there are all of the numbers we swirled and yeah that is just hitting the enemy his resistance has decreased and obviously farina has now the um, hydro damage buff from kazuha as well so the combination of these two will give you these numbers again you can now see over base farina uh, these numbers are really um, oops there's base farina uh, if you just look at the crap you can see here we're already doing more than like double damage which is quite good so the next question is well what happens if we now ignore citron and we just look at farina plus the kazuha reshred so this is f5 again we have to go through all of these showcases just to kind of see exactly what it is we get uh, when we layer all the different buffs there you go boom just swirling uh, we've got the max fan face stacks as indicated by the flash on the screen and these are basically the numbers the crits and the non-crits as you can see happening all right those are some of the numbers and here you can see i just tallied them uh, with a couple of the ranges that you can see as well so now the big thing what is the impact of adding citron to this equation so this is going to be quite important and this is f60 most important part so let's just quickly go here ah, speed run here with yelon all right enough speed running so here is farina boom hit him that's going to quickly generate a bit of fanfare stacks for us and exactly when we get the max fanfare we hit him with a bubble which means we got the timing really really well uh, so i'm just going to stop here with yelon because she's also giving a bit of like well like a boost of her c4 but regardless so that's what you get okay so we've got farina plus citron plus kazua resh red and a bit of yelon in the mix okay it, it it'll slightly boost these numbers but it's not going to be really really that that significant uh, since everyone's already got like max uh, lots and lots of hp but regardless what i really wanted to see in this case was what the differences are between an f6 and an f5 and remember this is all just napkin math but these are the numbers 
and if you now effectively go and you do a bit of a hit count so over a 10 second window you can see these or this is what the horse does the octopus and the crab you put these hits into a, an equation you account for the fact that sometimes you crit and sometimes you do not by taking an expected value uh, basically what it all comes down to is, is that Citroen in this case does about 400k damage. So this is obviously quite a bit less than the maximum Kokomi. But obviously if you now start including things like the Songs of Days Past um, artifact set that you also get with Yelon, which is going to boost her damage. And you not and you take instead of like 10 covalent stacks the full 18, so this is 1.8 and you multiply it out. Again, this is all just rough, whatever napkin math. Then you can see that Citroen's damage really starts adding up. And if you include Citroen's Q, there really could be a case to be made that she is pretty much equivalent to a C6 Kokomi in terms of damage. Once again, it depends on your rotations, it depends on your builds, and we'll only have a final verdict once things are added here on GC Sim. So take these numbers with a bit of a grain of salt, but it's just to highlight to you how I'm thinking of things, how I'm thinking systematically of what is the contribution that you get. And this is also how you should typically do um, your own investigation into the numbers but it shows you that Sichuan is not bad it shows you that a lot of people don't understand how these buffs and how all of them work together and once you start adding practical gameplay onto it then all of this just well there's so much variability here that it really just then boils down to you doing lots and lots of testing and ultimately making sure that you've got a good set of builds so this is the one trap that i think a lot of people fall into is that they typically especially with new units don't have all of the talents or all of the artifacts as well leveled as they do with all the units and hence there is that bit of a bias so once you really start equalizing it and for instance like with my citroen um, once i start getting better built and all of these things the, the the differences will become quite noticeable in any case so this is more of a high level discussion that i wanted to show you exactly what happens at the c level c6 level and what i can just observe from a couple of things here i will note that from the endicron spiral abyss if you happen to shred pyro onto the enemies and you get a massive yellow e or a crab letter that's hitting that is going to outpace any of the damage that you'll do here with Kokomi by a significant margin because the moment you multiply some of this these dam damage numbers by two then the differences are really really significant especially with the songs of days past being on Yelon and also then Citroen's um, damage buff plus songs of days past on Farina uh, hitting like a massive ape it's it, there, there, there's something to be said about it in any case so that's what i've got for you in today's video lots and lots of numbers and yeah the next video will be looking at a bit more of practical gameplay but i just wanted to bring to you bring to your attention what i'm thinking of and the ways and the methodologies that i take to really start understanding these characters and what their contributions are because there's a lot of misinformation a lot of people that don't understand this so the best you can do is just to look what happens in game record it and just then make your own conclusions all right enough yapping thanks for watching